my story, whatever that is now, whatever it will be in 20 years, for that to change lives, inspire, inspire people to overcome adversity, inspire people to know that they're not alone, and inspire people um, to just be patient and, and always you know, look up and know that God has a plan and a purpose for their life. We all have those moments where we need a little encouragement to get through our day. Someone to remind us that we are not alone. Find peace. Embrace joy. Seek God daily. Welcome to Jesus Calling Stories of Faith. This week we speak with former reality show star and Army veteran Luke Pell. As a contestant on ABC's The Bachelorette reality show, Luke found himself propelled into sudden fame and recognition. As he began to be watched by the world at large, often being publicly praised one day and harshly criticized the next, he found himself dealing with feelings of anxiousness and depression. Luke relied on the faith that had gotten him through a near-death experience following his service in the military to keep his heart focused on God during this time. I grew up in a small town right outside of Austin, Texas uh, called Burnett, and uh, my parents are still there, retired. Um, we had a, a family cattle ranch that I grew up on and uh, went to a 3A high school and, and played in the Friday Night Lights. My parents uh, raised my sister and I um, in the church, and there was a small little, it was actually a Baptist church that uh, we went to when I was a child, and, and uh, I took piano lessons from the pastor of the church, and I learned how to play piano there, and music really started for me there in that place. It was just a really a solid foundation for me to start out on, and, and and for me to appreciate what it's like to uh, really grow up in a small town and with a, with a positive um, upbringing with great parents that are salt of the earth people that um, knew the importance of faith and family and, and, and really laid that foundation for us. But then, you know, as you become an adult, you have to figure out what does your faith really mean to you? What is it just what your parents taught you? Is it just something that you were in a, in a habit of doing, a, a, a place that you were in a habit of going to every Sunday as a kid growing up? Or is there a personal relationship? Is there more, is there purpose behind um, what your faith is and how you define that? And so as I went in my college years, um, I think that that's really where I started figuring out what my personal journey was going to be. And you know, there was definitely some roller coaster moments for me. It was there was a lot of up and downs. I was in the military. I was um, um, I had a very clean break from my family life. When I was 18 years old, I, I, I went to West Point um, on a football scholarship and my family went with me the first day up to basic training. Uh, and took me to New York and we said our goodbyes and then I would only see my parents and, and the rest of my family once or twice a year after that while I was going to college at the military academy. You know, just with that college experience, like I was completely pulled out of that comfort zone that I had back down in Texas and moved up to New York and fell into a military culture that I had no clue what I was getting into, a very uh, stringent academic load uh, in, a, in an Ivy League academic situation and I had really not been prepared for that and I was just trying to make my way through and have success in life and so you're always you you begin to feel like you need to keep up appearances and you begin to feel like you don't want to be vulnerable and you don't want to show weakness because that's something that the military culture pulls in is you never want to show weakness on the outside you always want to be very uh, put together very very uh, systematic about how you make decisions and and uh, and so those were the challenges emotionally and from a and from a faith perspective that I started really dealing with um, during those four years of my life and that was just the beginning 
I graduated from West Point in 2007, and uh, I went into my five-year commitment in the military uh, as, a, as an Army officer, and uh, that was a new season, definitely, for me. That's when, you know, my faith began to being challenged was at that point in my life. It was like, hey, I'm more of a nine to five, go to class at, um, at the officer training school and then come home and do, and you have the rest of the weekend to do whatever you want. So that's when, you know, really for me, the temptations of partying and, and uh, just being a single 22 year old guy became uh, real. You know, my faith was still there, but I wasn't, wasn't actively growing. From a faith perspective and emotionally and, and in any perspective in life, if you're not growing and getting stronger in, in the direction of your goals, um, you're gonna be uh, digressing in the wrong direction and you're gonna be sliding backward. I think for me, that started a, the next season of really finding myself over the next um, three or four years mixed in with a lot of challenges in the military that were coming my way and and one of those was going to Afghanistan and and learning to you know lead troops uh, in combat at 23 years old and the reality of maybe I'm gonna face death uh, when I when I show up in Afghanistan or maybe I'm gonna lose my legs or all these these other fears start creeping in and, and they're of a different nature at that point I was trying to be competitive and be a great leader in the military and have success from a worldly perspective. For me, um, that was starting to be more and more of a low point. You know, um, it was just I didn't I didn't have a direction. I didn't have a goal. I was just I was just trying to buy my time. You know, while I was still in the military. You know, I was just starting to to uh, to wander a lot back and forth. Um, from that path. Then the military moved me to El Paso, Texas. It was my final and last uh, duty station for the last two years I was in the military. And so that was, I was frustrated about that because I was felt like that happened to me. You know, I was like, well, I didn't have a choice. You know, now I'm frustrated with being in the military because they're moving me somewhere that I don't wanna be. Um, this is not the life that I chose. I was back to wanting to pull control of my own life and and uh, and not really just giving it to God and saying, look, wherever, whatever door opens and that I'm supposed to walk through, I, I should be at peace with that. Rather than that, I was, I was angry of why, what did I do wrong? What could I have done differently to get where I wanted to be? Luckily, I, uh, I had a roommate that moved in with me out there, uh, a really good friend now, uh, a guy that I played football with, his name's Ryan Brents, and, and uh, you know, Ryan had just recently uh, become a Christian, and uh, you know, just I think maybe a year or two before that, and so he was completely in a different spot in his faith walk, and he was looking and digging and searching and always trying to grow in his faith walk because it was so new to him. And me, I kind of gotten stagnant, and uh, I was angry and just bitter and all these things. And it was so refreshing to have Ryan come in, and I think it was meant to be that way that he would be my roommate, and then that, and that through the conversations that we started having, that his his newfound faith would then kind of be the one that renews mine and, and brought me back to a spot of being like, I, my purpose is 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 not. For me to have control and there's so there's so much more out there uh, of a plan than and a destiny than what what i can come up with i think one of the biggest victories in my faith walk in that i i came back into a spot where um i was completely surrendering my plans and my expectations uh back to God and what what purpose that I was put on this earth for instead of what I could get out of this world and, and what people thought of me. I was starting to make plans for getting out of the military and, and moving back to the civilian world and getting a job there. And uh, I had this rare, um, a rare infection. I was like one in a million infection that got into my heart after we didn't know if it was from my wisdom teeth being taken out or something like that. It was just a very rare out of nowhere coincidence. And 
I was 26 years old and I went into heart failure and was admitted to the uh, VA hospital in El Paso, Texas. And it was to the point of being in ICU. And, um, you know, my family flew in that night um, and all my uh, extended family and friends, my roommate was out of town at the time. And my actually my, my ex-girlfriend at the time flew from Tennessee out there because uh, the, the consensus was is I was probably not gonna make it. I was. I was probably going to not make it through the night and I was going to pass away at that time. And so I go from, you know, being healthy, being a former college football player that works out every day and felt like I was, you know, in, you know, top shape uh, to having a life or death situation that had nothing to do with, you know, combat that I had been through, it had nothing to do with anything expected or normal. It was just completely blindsiding me. That was a moment, and probably one of the most defining moments of my entire adulthood was that, because um, my faith just went to a completely different level at that point. Because I, I basically, emotionally and mentally, I had to accept like death. I had to accept dying at that time. And I thought my faith was strong then, and I wasn't ready to die. I was like, I was, I was, I was, I was desperately fighting it in my head and so all these people that come in that love me you know basically are just there not knowing how the next day is going to go if I'm going to make it if I'm not going to make it and uh it was through that experience that you know I I realized even more and I guess I'm hard-headed I, I guess God kind of has to probably you know beat me over the forehead with things sometimes uh for it to make sense and really sink in with me but you know that definitely did it, uh, is, is that my purpose in this world, you know, is completely His. And, and, and it's up to what God has for me. And, and I can collect a bunch of money, I can collect a bunch of fame, I can collect a bunch of followers, all these things in this world. I can, I can, I can shoot for all those worldly goals, but you know, the day you die, none of that stuff matters. It doesn't matter at all. And the uh, only, only thing that does matter is the the legacy that you left, the, the inspiration that you left in the world, the people that you inspired, your, your faith that you were able to show to the rest of the world around you and the lives that you're able to change. Uh, that's the only thing that you can leave here. That's the only thing that matters um, if, you're, if you die tonight. We'll be back with more of our interview from Luke Pell right after this brief message from Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling has a wide array of book styles for all types of readers. Now there's something new that's designed to appeal to the men in your life. The same beloved Jesus Calling content now comes in a leather soft yet durable slate gray cover that is perfect for the man on the go and makes a great gift for dads, uncles, brothers, whoever that special man is in your life. Check out the new gray leather soft edition of Jesus Calling today at JesusCalling.com or wherever Christian books are sold. I continue to experience a lot of challenges after that, um, that now are helping me empathize and helping me support people that have anxiety and depression. Anxiety and depression to me, I was in the military in very alpha male society and I, you know, I, I didn't have much sympathy for somebody who had anxiety and depression. I felt like, hey, you know, look, there's a lot going, out, going on out in the world. Like you should have control of your stress. You should have you know, you should be mentally tough. And, and, and those were things that I had pulled from the military training and anxiety. It was basically PTSD, not from a war, but PTSD from that traumatic experience of almost having, you know, a, a heart failure issue that didn't, that didn't um, recover. And, uh, and so then anxiety and health anxiety became a rea reality for me over the course of the next year or two while I was, um, you know, healing and, and went into, you know, physical therapy and all those things. Um, I had to deal with what that real physical um, manifestation of anxiety was. I was struggling with this emotionally and physically, something that I never saw coming and something that I wished wasn't a part of my life, but 
you know, I finally am continuing to do this now is accepting this, it's part of my purpose, right? And, and for me to be able to share that with other people, for me to be able to share my vulnerabilities and, and the things that make me physically feel weak in this worldly body that I'm in, I think that there is something to be said for that and there's a reason for that. And I'm, I'm learning to embrace that now. There is something to be said for what Jesus Calling does in the same way that if I'm sharing my vulnerabilities of like my anxiety, if I share that on say social media, for instance, um, I share, I'll share a Jesus Calling passage on social media. I'll share that I'm, ha you know, that I dealt with anxiety or that that was an issue of mine on social media. And those are these very uh, internal battles that people sometimes are fighting about or, or, or maybe it'll address an internal battle. And I get more response from people with those things than I do with anything else that I put out because that's what matters. There's people that they're, they're, they're somewhere out in middle America that are struggling deeply with something that they've got nobody to talk to about. They don't know where to turn and they're looking for an inspiration. They're looking for someone that they can relate to that, oh wow, I'm not alone in this. Somebody else is dealing with this and they're looking for faith to latch on to, to, to get them through to another day um, in their own life and in their own battle that nobody else knows that they're fighting. I, I so much appreciate what Jesus Calling brings to the table and what it's been for me this is the daily, as a daily devotional. I know a lot of people that I talk to is that, you know, it, it, it can give you something that is very relatable to the problems that we're facing today, right? And what it is in the world that we live in now. And then it, and then it completely, bas you know, defines the scripture that's in there and how people can use that and apply that to their life. And so to have some roadmap of keeping your faith walk on track, that's what Jesus Calling has been for me. And uh, it's, it's been so cool to just always have that. And it's been the one thing that I've always come back to when I'm when I'm when I'm looking for inspiration I'm looking for when 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 I'm looking for God to speak to me um yeah so now you know it's been 7 years since I, I dealt with that life changing moment and um in that 7 years I got out of the military and almost kind of gave up on being in Nashville and 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 feeling like that was something that was put in me from a young age of just being around music and, and, and the the beauty of telling a story through a song and connecting people through music. And so that was in me and I and I wanted to be back here and do that. And I felt I felt like it was where I was supposed to be. And so I finally was able to to make that move back to Nashville. And his plan for my life is always in times when I am out of a comfort zone. And when I feel like things are completely going wrong. You know, if it was, you know, back at West Point thinking I'm gonna fail out my first semester and then God shows up and says, you know, it comes alongside you and says, you know, through somebody that gives you inspiration or however that message comes, you're gonna be okay, you're gonna make it through, you know. Um, you know, and, and, and fast forwarding through the military experience, the, the, the near death experience with my heart condition, uh, and then moving to Nashville and feeling like, wow, I don't, have a plan. I don't have a, a real job. I'm kind of doing this entrepreneurial thing and and trying to rent some houses and trying to you know put all these things, different things together. And you feel very uncertain. And that's when the search becomes, God, what am I doing here? I don't. I, I feel I feel alone out here. I feel like maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. And almost almost always those moments are the ones that I know that he had a plan for me. That's where that faith matters so much. It was, you know, the, uh, you know, the woman that touched Jesus, Jesus's cloak in the crowd, right? She had faith that if she just touched him, that that's what would change her, would heal her, right? And faith becomes the focal point for what that, um, defining moment is. And so, you know, I've, I've really learned to appreciate those moments of uncertainty. And when you feel like you're feeling more alone and you're feeling 
like you don't know what tomorrow holds and you're feeling like maybe you may, maybe I made the wrong decision, maybe I should, you know, change what I'm doing. Those are the times when you know, I get the most direct purpose from God in my life and I know that coming here 4 years ago to do this full time is the door that God did open for me and that I was supposed to be there and I think the most important part is it's helped me unpack my story and what that is and and help me learn how to tell my story and and tell it in a way that is through music and tell it hopefully in a way that people can really connect with it and relate to it and I just continue to grow and I'm I'm a work in progress and I've learned through being on a a dating reality TV show that you know the world is a very uh it's a very big judgmental narcissistic place to be in and especially on a scale of being on a reality TV show that is all about the negative and the dramatic side of your private life sometimes and for me I I've been there and I personally experienced that like the highs and the lows of of being a reality TV personality that was all praise and people feel like you're this character that can do no wrong and they forget that you're also a person, right? And they they really delve into your private life and they realize that you're just a human just like everybody else and that's been I think the biggest thing that I've been learning recently and and learning through um being exposed to a large audience in the world and being on reality TV and being in the entertainment business in and of itself is um we have to really stay true to ourselves and true to our faith and and keep that faith walk intact regardless of what the rest of the world is is throwing at you every day because uh the more we're thinking about the rest of the world and what they're thinking about us the less we're thinking about what God has for us and where our faith walk should be and so i've seen that challenge firsthand for myself and that's something that i continue to work on and and continue to look for answers in and how to deal with that day to day It's sad that it took a near death experience but you know that will be the most defining moment I'll probably never have another moment more defining than that in my life. Um because it 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 again it changed the trajectory of where I was headed and it and it showed me again that God saying, "Hey, you know, like Jeremiah 29:11 that it, one of my, you know, favorite verses is that, you know, know the plans i have for you says the lord plans for a hope and a future and plans prosper right and and that verse was defining for me and realizing that look he has a plan and his plan is the only one that matters you can catch up with what luke pell is doing these days and hear his music by visiting lukepell.com next time on jesus calling stories of faith we speak with christina anstead star of hgtv's flip or flop stress, long hours and personal challenges took Christina to a place where she was searching for peace and answers to health issues. She shares how focusing on God gave her the peace she needed to get her life back on course. Right now, I have a lot to be grateful for. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my health and I'm grateful for all my amazing work opportunities. When you go back and focus on the Lord and focus on peace, joy will come. Thank you for watching Jesus Calling Stories of Faith. To learn more about how to keep up with our shows bi-monthly and to listen to our weekly podcast, please visit youtube.com/jesuscallingbook to view and hear previous episodes and to watch a short informational video about how to access all things Jesus Calling on audio and video formats. Plus, learn how to subscribe to our podcast and video channels. Your subscription helps get the word out to more people who will benefit from these inspirational stories of faith.